Hello, so in this video we're going to go over the code for all of the vector operations that we introduced in the previous video. Um, so all of this code is written in C++, though you should be able to convert it to any other language that you, you want without too much difficulty. And it's all on GitHub if you want to download it and play with it yourself. A uh, link for that in the description. So let's get straight into the code. So the first thing we do is we define a square function. This is nothing particularly crazy, but it's going to come in handy. Uh, it just makes our code a bit easier to read. And then, then we define our actual vectors. So in C, we define this as what's called a struct in C++, though this behaves a lot like a, a class in any other language. So if you're not familiar with structs, you can think of them as classes. Um, we then have three variables for a vector, the x, y, and z coordinates. These are exactly what we discussed in the last video. So we have four, four different constructors for vectors. So this first one, it creates a default vector, which is, as it's defined here, just a vector with length one in the up direction which I have chosen to be the y-axis. This next vec constructor creates a copy of an existing vector. So it's important to note here that it's a new vector, but with the same uh, x, y, and z coordinates as an existing one. Uh, this constructor creates a new vector from three coordinates, and it puts them into the the values it has. This one takes a single number and it sets all its coordinates to be that number. So if we go and have a look at how they're defined, it's all fairly simple. So in, what this means here is these are the default values for the x, y, and z variables. Uh, and this is the code we need to run and these are very simple constructors so we don't need to do any of that. So this is the default, this copies a vector, this uses coordinates given to it, and this sets them all to a single uh, single value. So the next thing we want to define is the deconstructor. Uh, I won't go and show the code for that because it does literally nothing. It's just a good habit to get into, to always define and write deconstructors. They're usually used for memory management in C++, which is something you don't have to worry about in most other languages. Um, the next thing we do, we have two functions that we can call on this, which is length squared and length. So the reason we don't just have the single length function is that if you remember back to the formula, you need to calculate the square of the length and then square root it. And sometimes we might want the square of the length instead. So it seems slow to calculate it, square root it, and then square it again. So instead we have a different function for that. And if we go and look at the code for these, so here's the length squared function. It's just using the formula we had in the last video. It squares each coordinate one by one and then adds them together. And the length function is just the square root of the length squared function. So no surprises here. And then again, we have two functions for normalizing the vector. So the reason for this is sometimes we'll want to change the current vector to have length one, but sometimes we'll want a copy of the vector with length one, and we won't want to touch the original one if for some reason the length of that original vector still matters and we don't want to get rid of it. So the way we code these to normalize, we find the length and then we take this, the current vector, and we divide it by that length. Now notice that we also return the length here. So sometimes we will want to change the vector, but it's still useful to know the length. And this just means that when we call the normalize function, if we want, we can store the length in a variable. We don't have to, but if we do, 
it means it's a bit quicker than calling the length function and then calling the normalize function, because this way we only have to calculate the length one once. Here, to get a normalized version of the current vector, we create a new vector and we use the constructor that copies an existing one. So this vector v is a completely new vector, it, but with the same x, y, and z coordinates of the current one. We then normalize it, so v now has length 1. Notice that we're not interested in the return value or the length of v here. And then we return v. So we have the normalized vector. So here we now have a lot of operators. Now I won't go through all of these in detail. Um, they are very routine and we discussed how they're calculated in the previous video. But we do this because in C++ um, it has the wonderful feature of us being allowed to redefine operators. So I can use plus equals with vectors. I'm not limited to using it on pre-existing data types, and this will come in very handy uh, while we build the ray tracer. It makes the code much easier to read and to write. Um, we also have the dot product and the cross product. Now, the code for these is nice and simple. It is just writing out the formulas from the last video. So if we go and have a look at that now, here's the dot product, here's the cross product. I won't stop to explain them. Uh, if you want them explained, go back to the previous video. And then here we have the list of all the operators that I just pointed out. So again, copying over variables, return this. Here we add the variables of the thing we're adding for, for plus equals and then we just return this at the end. The reason all the operators return this at the end is because it means you can then sort of chain expressions together. Um, it's why you can write things like x plus y plus z um, because it returns the result. Um, and with while loops you can do funny things where you modify <laughs> Uh, variables and then check what they're equal to, all in a single conditional statement. Uh, that's why we do this. It, it is a requirement of the language, um, but we still have to put it in there. It's not done automatically. And so we continue with minus equals, times equals, by a constant this time. Uh, not a constant, uh, a number rather than a vector. And dividing by a number as well. And this operator here finds the negative of the current vector. Um, that was something that we touched on briefly uh, in the last video with regards to subtraction. And this keyword const means that we don't change the current vector. And that's something we will make extensive use of because that will then force compiler errors if we try to change any variables that we don't want to change. Uh, and here we have even more operators. So these are operators that don't modify the vectors given in. Um, they take two vectors and they return a new vector. So again, it's defined exactly as we discussed in the last video. And here we have subtraction, multiplication. Uh, here we multiply two vectors together, um, which strictly speaking, is mathematically not okay, but sometimes it's just really useful to be able to do this. Um, so we put it in anyway, um, but do bear in mind, this isn't really a, something we want to overuse. We want to be careful when we use this. But here we're multiplying vectors by numbers, which is fine, and we have to define it again for vectors and numbers the other way around. Uh, this division of two vectors, it's the same as multiplication of two vectors. Sometimes it's useful, but it's not really okay. But we put it in here anyway. 
and then we have division of vectors and numbers, which is completely okay. Um, and now here, now we get on to something more interesting. Type def vector point. What this means is, we want to define a new type, but it's going to be identical to a vector. So actually, this doesn't create a new type. It just lets us refer to an existing type by a new name. And the reason we do this is because vectors and points are so similar. They're both just a list of three numbers. And sometimes we want to sort of swap between a point or say the vector that goes from the origin to that point. And also, if you subtract two points, you'll actually get the vector that goes from one to the other. Um, so we really want to be able to interchange between these two types, which is why we make them the same type. Um, and now we consider vector twos. So these aren't going to be useful for considering 3D space, but they behave a lot like vectors, so we'll put them in here as anyway. Um, we'll use them more for describing two-dimensional coordinates, so that might be uh, points on textures, for example, which is something we will get to later and worry about more, but for the moment we're putting it in here just so we don't have to later. Um, so this only needs two coordinates, um, I've called them u and v here, you can call them x and y if you like. Um, now the difference is this vector 2 returns the zero vector, where u is zero and v is zero, it's not a sort of default up vector. Um, but the other three constructors are very much the same as the ones for our normal vectors, and we only use the single equals operator. Um, I think this is all we'll need, but um, we can come and add more here later. Uh, it's not too hard to do, it's just a bit tedious, so I don't want to add operators that we won't need. Um, and then for some of these, this is, again, the constructors in detail. Uh, the destructor does nothing again, and equals sets it its value equal to that of another vector. So there we go. That is all of the vector operations uh, in code form. Um, yeah, there's nothing too crazy here going on. Um, there's a few neat tricks that improve speed slightly, like having the second length squared function and returning length with the normalize function. Um, you may be able to improve speed slightly by, say, saving the length as an extra variable um, within the vector, but I don't think the performance gains will be significant. Um, for most vectors, we won't need their length, and it will be unusual that we need to call the length function more than once. So you can, I would encourage you to experiment with uh, any improvements that might give you, but the reason we haven't put it in is I don't think it's necessary. So in the next video we will talk about something you can actually do with vectors, we'll talk about rays, and how to find where rays hit objects, which is pretty much what the ray tracer does. So. I look forward to seeing you then, thank you for watching, and goodbye.